So uh, we have one more talk. Um, the last speaker, uh, also from IBM, is David Bradford. Uh, David is a commerce, mobility, and social media consultant for large enterprise clients. And especially for today, he's uh, our expert on the recent Apple plus IBM uh, agreement uh, partnership. And will tell us uh, about what that might mean for us. So, David. Great. Uh, thanks, Dean Stern. And uh, thanks for having me out to your campus. This is a beautiful campus. Um, I really enjoy it. Uh, love coming out to talk to people about the, uh, the partnership. Um, as a matter of fact, um, as, uh, as Hal has uh, mentioned here and introduced myself, uh, that is my responsibility. I, I go out and I talk to uh, uh, CIOs, CEOs, C-level organizations about this relationship that both Apple and IBM have put together. Um, in fact, you very rarely see these two logos partnered with anybody um, to this significance. In, in other words, being able to put the Apple logo up against anyone else's logo is, is, is taboo, and, in, and likewise, uh, you know, IBM doesn't lend it out. So this was a very big announcement. And, and when I say big announcement, um, 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 this was put out um, um, when the announcement came out in typical Apple fashion. Um, it really didn't state anything more than this, that the two companies were working together. And when we, we, when we talk about this, um, most people read that and said, wow, this is, this is, this is interesting, this is a change, this is, a, this is a, a two very well-known, highly regarded technology companies coming together, um, but they're fundamentally different, right? And the, the premise behind this is that when we, when we start to look at it, uh, they weren't all that different. Um, in fact, uh, the, the, the corporate folklore here is that, um, that Tim actually reached out to IBM, um, to our CEO, now a year ago, and he proposed a proposition. He said, you know, I think the two companies need to talk. Um, I'd like to talk to you about what we're experiencing, what we're seeing in the workforce, how we currently work with our employees and what we're doing with them, um, and, and, uh, and how we'd like to see things go forward. And we'd really like to partner with you uh, IBM, and here's, here's what we're thinking. So the, the dialogue went on, uh, quite frankly, secretively, for, for a number of uh, quarters with our CEO. And, um, and, and they, uh, um, they basically were, were come to an agreement on how the two companies would work together. And this is where, this is where the fundamental change is, and here's, here's where the two companies came together on the common ground. The common ground is the characteristics of what, I, what Apple brings to their technology, to their user interface. And Apple, as we all know, has always been first and foremost about the user experience. And this user experience is driven by the devices that they bring to market. Fundamentally, Apple is an organization that leads. Its most important thing, in its stated most important thing in the organization is its products. IBM leads with a uh, mindset the most important thing about our company is its people. So you have those different dynamics. But what we both agreed on was that we needed to reimagine how work was getting done. That's an overused term, I understand. I think a lot of corporations um, bring their technology, bring their products out to market with that stated purpose. We're gonna reimagine how work gets done. But with Apple and IBM, that's a reality. And we're starting to see it right now. Even within IBM, all of us who lugged around laptops and used PowerPoints, we're all now carrying iPads. Um, we're collaborating with each other using those technologies. Um, we're seeing new technology come out that we're taking to our customers and working with our customers on that we never had access to before. And one of the, the common characteristics that we, we now approach the problem with and, and reimagining how work gets done is we, we take the fundamental process and the fundamental solution that Apple brings to its products, listed here, that they have convenience, that they're powered by analytics, that they have mobility uh, first mindset, but it's also enhanced your life when you got that device and you said, this is a game changer. I can now sit in my living room and shop. I can now um, watch television. I can now access different applications that help me do my banking. Um, we've got all of these useful apps now in our personal life, but we need to move that to the, the enterprise. And that's where Apple struggled, and that's where IBM is struggling, to actually bring this new technology into the enterprise. So what we agreed on is, is this movement test. And a litmus test for the two organizations when we look at reimagining the workspace is that, again, it's still powered by mobility. 
we are all going to be using these devices going forward in how we interface with our work and how we do in our personal life. The thing that's fundamentally different here is that it needs to empower the employee. If we're just going to use these devices to do email and calendaring, we're no better off. We can do that with any device. We can do that today. How are we going to be doing business in the future? So to do business in the future, we have to have these deep analytic skill sets. We're going to have to have the ability to, to process this information in a much different way. And the user is going to experience, or, or, the user is ex expecting this to come to them. Um, I can give you some examples as we get into this, but quite frankly, we've got these systems of engagement out there that we've had for a number of years, and they're a voluminous amount of data. We need to get that into the user. But the problem that we're seeing is that the user can't get that information out of the system. It's, it's a well-known common, it's a well-known problem. And even though we've built these great interfaces, it's still not in a format that they can consume. One of the things and one of the differences between Apple and IBM that we, we, came to, um, we came to understand about each other is that how the two companies in the past approached the same problem. Someone would say, I need to access this information, this HR information, about productivity of my field workers. IBM would approach this as, let me solve that problem for you. We approached it as a meal. We looked at all the back-end systems. We looked at all the difficult processes. We put a big spreadsheet together. We, we, we crunched that down, and we gave them a, an incredible amount of charts and detail that uh, is difficult to consume. And we said, no, 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 let me put that on an iPad for you so you can consume it. And it was still basically an eye chart. We couldn't get that information out of there. All I wanted was a simple question. I wanted to speak into my phone like I do Siri and say, tell me what the productivity is of field workers in Southern California. That's what I want to know. So what Apple has brought to IBM is they were able to reimagine that question. And they said, don't think of it as a meal. Think about it as a snack. So I, as a user, now consume things on a daily basis as a snack. Those are your apps. Those are what you're using today. That's how you get to point A to B. You ask your phone, I, I, need, I, I, need to get to, I, I need to get to the John Wayne Airport. I need to get to Los Angeles. You don't really care about the, the routes and everything else. You just want to get there the fastest way. So as we move from this era of having these meals and sitting down to meals and solving problems as meals, we've got to approach them now as snacks and get, delivering that to the user that has that interface. And when I, when I talk about the snacks, it doesn't mean that we aren't doing the complicated pieces that, that, Matt, talk, <coughs> excuse me, that Matt talked about. We still have to do all that great design work. We still have to do all the whiteboarding. It's just that when we're thinking about the user interface, we have to design it for mobility. And we have to talk about that mobility up front. How is it actually going to be consumed that, in that information? Um, all right, so that's why the two companies are coming together. That's why the two companies are working on this. IBM brings this great depth of knowledge in our integration and how we work with customers. We have this incredible amount of analytical research and analytic uh, information that comes from the data, the rich data, the information, as people talked about it, data, the new oil, Data is need, now is mined to make a corporation more productive and to find new products, new ways of doing business. That's what IBM does. That's what IBM is focused on. It's about the data economy. And now bringing that data information, those great analytics that we're working with, into the users and into the consumer that are in the enterprise. And that's where our focus is. When the two companies announced that they would be working together, it essentially said IBM made a public statement um, with the statement of the partnership, is that going forward, Apple will be our go-to partner for accessing this information, to make it snackable, to make it usable. Likewise, Apple made the public statement that IBM will be its go-to partner for being able to access that information, integrate those things, and build out these, these, uh, these extensive applications. The partnership is really broken down into four different areas. And this is what took, I'll call many months, quarters, for both Apple and IBM to determine how the two will be working together. The first one is what we call mobile first for the iOS. And this is a, um, this is a team of people that are now out there building applications with Apple and with our customers. So those snackable solutions I'm talking about, those applications, what we've done is we've approached a number of industries uh, and we've asked them to help us, IBM and Apple, build out the applications that make most sense for your business. 
I mentioned a little bit before that when you're building out applications and when consumers bring those devices into the enterprise, they're expecting the same user experience that they had with that iPad or that iPhone when they get to the office. Well, they don't. The reason being is because the apps don't exist. Nobody's written the apps. And not many people will write the apps on their own because they have to integrate to the back-end systems. So to jumpstart this, to get us to reimagining work, to get these devices where they're used and people have the information they need, somebody had to step up. And typically, it's two or three people in the IT department that have to write an iOS code, um, that have to update the applications and, and make them usable. But they're being used by the entire enterprise. So that's where IBM stepped up. We've said, that's our responsibility. Let us write those applications. So that's what we're doing. We're writing those applications to these back-end systems, and then we're making them available to all of our customers. So it becomes an app store for the enterprise. The next area is our mobile first for iOS platform. This is one of the big reasons that I, uh, Apple did partner with IBM, is because of the software. We have the software that help developers <coughs> build these applications, either out on the cloud, natively in their environments, for multiple iOS environments, um, but primarily, we're leading with the iOS environment because of the rich user experience that we can give with those devices. Um, the next one is our Apple Care for Enterprise. This was recently announced uh, by Apple. It is an Apple part number. It is procured by Apple, but it's serviced by IBM. And the important thing here is that before this, IT departments didn't have 24-7 support on those devices. They couldn't exchange them. A lot of them had to go into the store with their iPads and with their MacBooks from a corporate level to get them repaired. No longer. IBM now comes out. Um, we have field service people that, that service them. We have depot repair. We have on-site. Um, the last one here that, that, um, that I can go into a little bit more deeply is that IBM will now be reselling the Apple product line. Um, that's everything from an iPad all the way up to their MacBooks. And the reason we're doing that is to make this possible, to make those apps usable to make them accessible and for the enterprise to actually reimagine work, we know that they need to have the devices. So we're building for iOS first, we're deploying these, these solutions out there, we're managing them, we're servicing them, and that includes having those devices um, uh, procured through IBM. All right, so that was, the, that was the premise behind it. That took us to where we are today. So a year has gone by. And, um, and maybe I can kind of give you a quick brief on, on where we are today. So where we are today is, um, in this first bullet point, is we're building out these, these iOS applications. We're going to be building out 100 of these. And as I mentioned, we're building these out for about, and this chart shows, we're building this out for 16 different industries. These applications um, are now out. They're, uh, they're going to become publicly available in December. Um, these applications um, help us do anything from mobile wealth planning to helping airline, uh, airlines reschedule people while they're in flight. They walk through the, the aisles and they help them uh, rebook their flights if they're late. I don't know if any of you travel with a family, but uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you've got a family and you've got three, three kids with you and the plane is running late and you've got a connection you've got to make, all chaos ensues. Um, you, you've got to now book hotels for your family, you've got to change your entire process. It's, it's all that more complicated. But when the flight attendant can walk the aisle and say, look, our best flyers are going to be delayed. We need to get to those, rebook them on other flights. But I have analytics on the back end that also show that one of our best flyers is also traveling with a family. I need to rebook a flight for five people in the same seats or in the same row. It's very complicated. It's the analytics on the back end of these systems that make it very powerful. So as we develop applications for healthcare, for insurance, for retail, what we're really thinking about is the complexity on the back end systems. And that's why those applications weren't developed and that aren't available right now in an app store. Going forward, they will be. And when IBM publishes these applications out there, we're publishing them to be 60, 70% complete. We know that there's going to be a lot of complexities and there's going to be a lot of back-end integration that needs to be done. But you've got the starting point. You don't have to hire five, six application developer engineers. Uh, you don't have to do a lot of the user experience. It's already been done for you. So as these applications roll out, um, we'll have over 100 of them, I think they uh, plan by the end of, the, end of 2015. Um, and they'll be available out there for companies to download. Um, Another area I want to talk about is the ERP for the iOS. Now here's another example that it's just, 
it's, it's comical. Um, as you get out there into the, the enterprise world and you start working with the enterprise world, you, you find that they take, typically will take a complex problem or a, a user interface and just shrink it down and expose that out to the users. Well, the problem with that is it's not snackable, it's not usable. So um, we're working with the ERP companies and the ERP systems, specifically SAP and, and, S, and uh, Oracle, to try to get that information now user accessible. Um, the other area of uh, significant piece that, that IBM's working on is as companies build out these applications and uh, bring them to a useful life inside the organizations, they're realizing now that they're writing five, 10, 20. I've got customers with over 100 internal applications that they have that are accessible to their employees to use. There's no life cycle management. There's no ability to make sure that all those 100 applications are going to meet the new upgrade requirement, that they won't fail when there's new, a, a new iOS update. So what IBM comes in and does is it takes on those responsibilities for those applications, does life cycle management, determines which apps aren't being used, which ones need to be rewritten, and which ones need to be um, ready for the next upgrade for the iOS. All right. The mobile first for the platform with our iOS um, partnership. This is significant. Um, I talked about how it was very important for the information, the user experience, and how they were going to be able to bring that information tangibly into the, the, the user and the enterprise to have. But what's going on in the back end is all of that system of the system of record information that needs to now be presented to the user needs to, for the lack of a better way, uh, it needs to be filtered. And the filter that it needs to have is, is this the right user? Do they have permissions to look at that information? Is this, is, is this the right information? Is this the most updated information? And so we use a very, um, a, a, a very uh, I'd like to call it complicated, but over the last three, four years, IBM has acquired a number of different companies. Um, they've written their own technology, and they've integrated all together so that we have now what's called the mobile first for the iOS environment. And what this is, is it's our solution for platform development for the applications. Um, this platform development can be done in-house, can be done, be done over the cloud. We, we use our Bluemix environment for doing most of this. And what we're doing here is that with this application development environment, we are now able to build those applications, manage those applications, the enterprise can manage those applications, update those applications, and make them um, corporate or standard policy. The next piece is on the devices. We need to have the security, the device management, and the catalog that the users are going to be using to access those information. So those two pieces of software um, were one of the core fundamental tenets in the partnership and one of the reasons that Apple had looked at IBM to do this. Um, I kind of talked about the two issues here. We've all we've got that system of record information that's living in the enterprise. We need it now to get it into the user. Not, not an easy thing to do for most organizations. There's a lot of integration that has to happen. But by using these development environments that we make available to our customers, they're now able to do that. Um, here's Apple Care for the Enterprise. We did talk about this. This is a new service. It was announced November 4th by Apple. Um, now the enterprises can uh, can sign up for this service. It's the it's the same great service that you've always had with Apple Care, um, but now with the enterprise enablement of it, they've got the 24 hour support for a help desk that's going to pick them up and knowledgeably know about their product. Here's something else that's really neat about it is that it's one stop support for the Apple hardware, the the uh, the the OS, but. IBM will also support those applications that are being developed, those Apple branded applications that we're working on right now. So that's pretty significant. Um, that's, uh, that's something that an IT organization was more than willing to give up because now they have somebody else standing behind what's being written and what's being developed out there. Um, and then this last one here is um, something that we call uh, Supply Activate and Manage. It's being able to get the devices into the hands of the, the users. It's being able to provision those, activate them, and then manage those devices out there. We have customers that are developing applications for 5,000 store associates. They're going to have 5,000 devices out there, 10,000 devices. And this is a very complicated process. Not only that, you need to refresh these devices on a regular basis. They're being hard. They're, they're being used. It's, it's a hard use environment. Um, whether you're a field service, maybe you're out there in a construction site um, doing uh, design work or doing build work, you need to refresh them on a rather regular basis. You can't always bring them into a depot. You've got to push out notifications. You've got to push out updates 
To do that, you're going to need a very robust environment that does that and automatically manages it for you. So that's where IBM comes in. Um, kind of to wrap up here, um, this, is, this is, as I mentioned before, we're going to reimagine mobility. We're going to reimagine how we're working so that we're not dragging these laptops around with us so that the information is presented to us in real time. And this real time information is core and fundamental to what we're really trying to do. Um, I'll give you some examples. Um, and, I, and I can't talk about the companies that are doing it, but I think you can obviously imagine how they're going to be doing this. Um, imagine with now the capability of what Apple calls iBeacon and the Apple Pay. Um, just the fact that consumers are now more than willing, one third of consumers are now more than willing to turn on their devices for location awareness. That means when they walk into that store, they're saying, I'm here, I'm going to buy something, I'm looking around, I want to see what you've got. The retailer that consumes that information and turns that back on is now able to analyze that customer, that shopper. I now know their purchase behavior because I've logged into the point of sale system. I know their loyalty, I've got their loyalty card information. I know what their likes and dislikes are because I'm tied into the Twitter feed. I, am, I know more about this consumer than I ever have before. So what I really want to do is know that they're there. But what I really want to do is predict their behavior, what they might want to buy. And they may not think that they want to buy their new winter coat there. But I know that they buy winter coats every year. They typically wait till the spring and they get it on sale. I want them to buy it now, maybe at full price, maybe at a discount. I'm going to push out to them and I'm going to say, hey, you know what? We'd really like to get your business today. I'm going to give you 20% off on winter coats. Let's just change their behavior. They're going to get more margin for that product by not having to sell it at wholesale in the spring. But now they're going to be able to sell it immediately. They'll discount it, but they don't have to discount all winter coats. It's the prime season, but they know this shopper behavior. They know this shopper will never buy full price. So let's get them now while they're, while they're in the store. So there's this predictive behavior now in the shopping that is going to reimagine how we do mobility. And, uh, and with that, I'd kind of like to just wrap up, take some questions. Um, um, it's, it's an exciting time. We're all in it. We're all going to see how this happens. The analytics that are driving all of this is, uh, is core and fundamental to the partnership between Apple and IBM. All right. Thank you. For a couple of questions. Yeah, no, start here. For me? Yeah. Oh. I was just curious how. Oh. I was just, I was just curious how the work is divided between both companies. Like, do we use the iOS developer to like, you know, develop their apps, and are, are we collaborating our, our software teams together? How's how's this working? Um, so in this particular case, what IBM is doing is that IBM is looking for foundation customers. Foundation customers are IBM customers that have a problem that they're trying to solve in the mobility space. They come to IBM, we do a workshop. And we identify what the problem is, what they're trying to do, what they're trying to solve. We then um, whiteboard it, we build it out, we start the UI, we start the user experience first. We take it back to Apple, and Apple helps us debug it. They help us, and, and quite frankly, the companies are just as guilty as IBM. We make things too big. And they help us scale it down. They help us answer that question of what is the, what is the user really trying to solve. So yes, first it's done by IBM and the customer. The coding is, um, is uh, whiteboarded. We put it all into plan. We take it back to Apple. They review it. They analyze it. Then our coders for the iOS development start working on it. Um, the final app doesn't get released until Apple gives it a blessing. Okay. Another question? Yeah. Uh, do you see the like uh, are we going to partner with uh, third like standard low and uh, mobile device management uh, vendor like AirWatch and Mobile Air? Are we going to compete with them? Yeah, do we compete with them? Uh, yes, quite frankly, we do. Um, um, we have a solution called our Mobile First Secure solution, and the Mobile First Secure uh, does quite frankly quite a, quite a bit of what they do. Um, we're also now enrolled into the device enablement program from Apple that allows us to uh, tie our mobile device solution into in, back into the, the DEP that's provided by 
by Apple to give them a real robust and secure environment. Um, there's things about our mobile device management solution that are specifically written for the enterprise. And what I'm talking about there is the security, the, um, the ability to lock it down, the ability to know when an application that is being used by the enterprise has been tinkered with and put back out so that uh, it knows immediately it's doing the code check to find out if, in fact, this is a sanctioned application or not. Um, there's many different differences between the products, um, but going forward, uh, obviously, IBM's GoTo is going to be our mobile first secure solution, and we'll be using that, um, not one of those, those other mobile device management solutions. Great. Um, I'm going to cut it off here. Thank you, David. Thank you very much.